One of the best things about doing what I do is that as a result of the videos I've made over the years, I've had the opportunity to interact with a number of people that I never normally have crossed paths with. For example, back in April 2018, I was contacted by a record producer and label owner called Comron V. We share a common interest in unusual audio formats and he wanted to tell me about his latest project to release a live recording of the electronic music pioneer Susan Charney on the first quadraphonic vinyl record to come out in over 30 years. Now, not only was he releasing a record, he was also going to put it in a box with the appropriate decoder so that anyone could listen to it once they bought the set. And also, the set was going to be limited to just 227 copies. He wanted to know whether I'd be interested in receiving one of these, even though they don't normally send them outside the US. Well, of course, I said yes. And here we are, all these months later, it's turned up. So let's take a look at it. Okay, now first off, Suzanne Charney is an artist whose name I was up till this point unfamiliar with, although her music I no doubt have heard over the years because it's been used all over the place. In fact, there's a documentary all about her work with electronic music called A Life in Waves, and that's available through various streaming services. So if, like me, you want to bring yourself up to speed, you'll find links to that in the video description text box, where you'll also find links to various other online articles about the making of this record from a technical perspective, talking about the process that was used to record it and all that kind of stuff. And also, the instrument that was used, by the way, was a boucle. Later on, I mention a Moog. Ignore me, it was one of these things here. That looks like what's down the back of my television at the moment. Now, if you want to get hold of one of these box sets, well, there are only 227 of them being made, and they're being sold at $227 a piece. I've got no idea if there are still any in stock at the time I'm making this video, but again, there'll be a link to that in the video description text box as well. With the lid removed I find I've got a nice signed personalised letter telling me that my box set is number 25E out of the 227 they've made. The record in the top of here of course is a 12 inch, it's played at 45 RPM though and contains about 30 minutes or so worth of music. At the bottom of here we can see that number 25E again and if we have a look at the record in here it looks a little bit like it's printed off centre but it's nothing to worry about that's just the design on the label but if we look closer at that label we can see it mentions the 45 RPM on there as well and if we look even closer at the record in the right light we can see that that 25E has also been etched into the centre part of here so that number is on the record on the sleeve on the back of the box and on the left now if we have a look inside here we can see we've got the decoder it shifted a little bit in transit I've had a word with them about this and since they sent me mine out they've modified the packaging a bit so it's held a little bit more securely than it has been in mine but there's no problem it's just moved ever so slightly so the purpose of this decoder is to take a standard stereo or two channel line level input on one side and output four channel or quadraphonic line level audio at the other now, whilst this quadraphonic decoder has been created specifically for this particular project by the Australian hi-fi manufacturer Involve Audio, the hope is that it's going to kickstart revival in the fortunes of quadraphonic vinyl in general, so there'll be other records that can use this in the future. Now, it really is quite simple to set up. You've got your power input here, an on-off switch, line level inputs on this end, so you'll need to have a phono preamp before this step after your record player. But then at the other end, you've got four line level outputs. So you'll need to send those off to either a powered set of speakers or via some kind of amplifier first. Now, interestingly, they haven't tried to reinvent the wheel here. This is an existing quadraphonic standard that's used on the board. It's the Sansui one, known as QS, that came out in the early 1970s. And it worked fine. It's just there were quite a lot of competing quadraphonic systems at the time. So it got a little bit lost in the mix. Back then, you could have either got an amplifier with a built-in QS decoder, or you could have bought yourself a separate QS decoder, which would perhaps have powered your rear speakers to attach onto your existing stereo amp. 
Now, QS is a matrixed quadraphonic system. What that means is that those four channels of sound are hidden within your standard stereo two-channel signal. So you could get one of these records, play them on a normal record player, and it would sound fine in stereo, but put it through one of those QS decoders and it pulls out the two additional channels. Much the same as Dolby ProLogic or ProLogic 2. And indeed, if you were to play this record through a ProLogic 2 decoder, you will get a pretty fair approximation of what it should sound like. It would sound best through the normal decode that's supplied in the box, but you could play it at a pinch on a ProLogic 2 decoder and get some semblance of that quadraphonic sound. Also inside the box we've got three six feet stereo RCA cables which will of course line up with the four outputs and two inputs on that decoder. We've got the power adapter in here which is multi-voltage, it outputs nine volts and it also comes with the adapters that are for the various countries. We've got the Euro plug here, the UK one there, that's the Australian one and one for the US as well. And inside the bottom of this box, we've also got a nice little pin badge which mirrors the art that's on the outside of the box. So with the appropriate connector attached to the end of that adapter, all I need to do now is to try and find an appropriate space in the house to set this up and then move a few speakers around. OK, so I'm going to show you around the Modi setup I've got here. So this is the decoder. It's switched on now. I don't know if you can see with all the light in this room, but there are a few LEDs lit up here which no doubt indicates something. Uh, but into that, I have plugged in my record player, which is going into the input here, the power, of course, and then the outputs. This one goes to the front left and right speakers, and then this one goes to the rear left and right. And both of these are powered speakers. The rear ones are from Canto, the front ones are from Roth. I've done a video about both of these speakers that I bought over the years. They are very closely matched in sound. Uh, in fact, I kind of feel that they've come out of the same factory, but with slightly different configurations. So uh, yes, they will make a good uh, quad sound because all the speakers should sound pretty much the same as one another. So the record player that I've plugged into here, that's my Sony PSF9 which is a battery powered turntable so that just means one less thing to plug in and it's got a line output over here which is what's going off to that decoder board so yeah that's the record player there I'll just show you the different speakers I've got okay so looking around the room that's the front right speaker the front left the rear left and the rear right and of course I'll be sitting here with the speakers surrounding me. Well, that was an interesting experience. Now, I've got to say, first off, this isn't the kind of music that I would normally buy. Kind of um, experimental, electronic, atmospheric, moog that sounds, but um, I really did enjoy it. And I think a lot of that is down to the fact that it was in quad. If you close your eyes, it just sort of created this soundscape, this kind of alien landscape almost of uh, noise all around you. Uh, very interesting. Um, I'd probably like to have another listen to that because it just really was was an unusual experience all in it. I, I wouldn't really class it as, as sort of music as such. It was just more of a kind of experience. Uh, yeah, so that really worked out quite well. Now, I know there's sort of audio file type people who'll be saying, well, you haven't got the right setup here. You need these speakers and you need to have it all equidistant to one another and all the rest of it. Now, I could adjust the balance on here. And uh, of course, I've got two powered speakers, so I could adjust the volume between the front and the back to get it. So it felt like everything was coming at me at the same time from all directions. But yeah, of course, obviously in an ideal environment, you'd have a, a much better setup than this. But this was just to try it out. And it worked really well, uh, just on this modest setup that I've got here. So um, I will be doing some more videos about quad at some point in the future. But the reason I've been putting them off is because it's been such a hassle to set up. In fact, I've bought a... Uh, a quad amp not too long ago well perhaps about a year ago now and I've got four matching speakers new in the box and I've got a, uh, a CD4 decoder a load of stuff 
I've just really got nowhere to set it all up. So this setup here that I've got with just two sets of powered speakers, a battery powered record player and a little box plugged in, even though it's only a temporary setup, it's a great way of experiencing it. I've got to say, I think this is the first time I've ever heard um, quad off a vinyl record. So that's something. So yeah, definitely recommend this for anyone that's interested in sort of experimental sound type uh, experiences I'll put your links to them to the you know this in the video description text box I'll stick it in the comments as well because some people say they've got trouble finding the video description text box on TVs and smartphones and things but yeah thanks to these people for sending this to me this has really been quite an interesting afternoon for me overall uh, so I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and if you have, then I suppose I should do that thing where I say, if you like it, subscribe, thumbs up, all that kind of stuff, and support me on Patreon. But you know all that anyway. Uh, so that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. You know, back in the 1970s, I used to have quadraphonic sound in my Ford Capri. Was it any good? It was brilliant. A 2.8 injection. It was a bit tail happy though, so you had to be careful in the wet. No, I mean, was the quadraphonic sound any good? Oh yes, quad. I remember that. I had it in my Ford Capri. Right, um, so what did you listen to on it? Well, mostly the radio, and a few cassettes. That doesn't sound like quad. Are you sure it wasn't just a normal car stereo? No, it had four speakers. Two in the front, and two in the back. That's standard. To be quad, all the speakers need to play different things to one another. They all played whatever I was listening to. Unless it was raining. And then sometimes the one in the passenger door used to cut out. No, I mean, did the speakers in the back play the same thing as the ones in the front. Of course they did. You don't want to be listening to Barry Manilow and Neil Diamond at the same time. Oh no, the idea with quad is that you're surrounded by music. So you could have someone perhaps singing out of the front speakers while someone else is playing the drums from behind you. Well, that's impossible. No, it's not. That's how it works. Not in a Ford Capri it doesn't. It's only a two-door, so there's no way you'd get a set of drums in the back, never mind manage to play them. <laughs>